Hey Grand Adventurers, welcome back. I'm your host Mark Guido and take a look behind me. Can you believe that that's Oklahoma? We're going to dispel all kinds of myths in this episode of Grand Adventure from the Wichita Mountains. So stay tuned. Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge, located in southwestern Oklahoma near the city of Lawton, has protected unique wildlife habitats since 1901 and is the oldest managed wildlife facility in the United States Fish and Wildlife Service system. The refuge is home to 240 species of birds, 50 species of mammals, 64 species of reptiles and amphibians, and 36 species of fish. Several species of large native mammals make their home at the refuge, including Plains bison, also known as the American bison that free range across this territory. In addition to the buffalo, visitors will find elk and white-tailed deer living here, along with Texas longhorn cattle preserved for their cultural and historic importance. Texas longhorns are descendants of cattle brought to the Americas by Spanish conquistadors from the time of the second voyage of Christopher Columbus until about 1512. Eventually, some cattle escaped or were turned loose on the open range, where they remained mostly feral for several centuries. But their stock slowly dwindled until 1927, when the breed was saved from near extinction by enthusiasts from the United States Forest Service, who collected a small herd of stock to breed on the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge. Many smaller mammal species also live in the refuge, including the nine-banded armadillo, basilisk, and the black-tailed prairie dog. The Wichita Mountains are approximately 500 million years old, formed as a result of a failed continental rift when the granite formations and overlying material were pushed above the surface around 325 million years ago. These are the oldest mountains in North America west of the Appalachians. Within the refuge, the holy city of the Wichita stands on a 66-acre area that looks much like Israel during biblical times. Numerous full-size buildings and structures were built here with locally quarried granite in the 1930s, including the Temple Court, the Lord's Supper Building, Herod's Court, and Pilate's Judgment Hall. The site is also home to the nation's longest-running annual Eastern Passion Play, the Prince of Peace. A narrow, winding road leads to the summit of Mount Scott, which with a summit elevation of 2,464 feet, is the second highest mountain within the refuge. We had not heretofore realized that Oklahoma even had mountains, but with a vertical relief of 800 to 1,000 feet above the surrounding prairie and their steep and rocky flanks, these are legitimate mountains.
view from the summit of Mount Scott encompasses the whole Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge. For our week in southwestern Oklahoma, we're camping just barely outside the wildlife refuge, waterfront at the city of Lawton's Lake Latonka East Campground. These 45 50 amp electrical sites cost $25 per night or $30 per night for the waterfront sites. Although rates have been discounted by $10 per night during our stay in low season. Spacing between sites is exceptional. Primitive tent sites are available as well. All sites are first come, first served, and many locals appear to have set up long term in the campground as the 14 day stay limit doesn't apply during the off season. There are numerous water hydrants scattered throughout the campground. Both the rules and the signage adamantly prohibit direct water connections, but many campers here seem to be ignoring that rule. One oddity here is the waterfront sites have electrical pedestals that are on the wrong side of the RV if you want your patio to face the lake. Also realize that these pedestals are 50 amp only, so if you have a 30 amp RV, you'll need to bring your own dog bone adapter. We're going to pause for a moment for a brief message from our video sponsor. When we come back, we'll share some water recreation on Lake Latonka, grab the biggest burger we've ever seen in historic mirrors, visit the U.S. Army's Fort Sill, do some kayaking and hiking, and learn some history at a local museum. So stay tuned. Improve your sleep while camping with a new RV mattress from our video sponsor, Brooklyn Bedding. They offer four different mattress constructions in 21 different sizes, depending on preference and price point. Everything from standard queen to all of those funky odd RV sizes. Brooklyn Bedding manufactures all of its mattresses right at their factory in Arizona. And RVMattress.com ships them right to your door for free. 
all rolled up and compressed in a vacuum seal. Just cut the wrap to unroll the mattress onto your bed, then cut the vacuum seal. For our mattress, Brooklyn bedding starts with a layer of high density foam for a supported base. Just above the base, an eight inch core of over a thousand individually encased coils provides the essential support. Immediately above the coils is a one inch layer of memory foam and two inch layer of hyper elastic Titan Flex foam. Finally, at the very top is a 1.5 inch layer of antimicrobial copper flex foam with Titan Cool, which is designed to maintain an ideal sleep body temperature of 88 degrees. Every RV mattress from Brooklyn Bedding comes with a 10 year warranty and a 120 night sleep trial. Visit rvmattress.com slash grandadventure to get 25% off your entire purchase with promo code GRANDADVENTURE. But wait, stop the presses. Because coming up at the end of this month, RVMattress.com is going to be holding its Black Friday sale. This is when they offer their best deals of the year. But don't delay, because once November is over, so are the deals. Now, let's get back to our program. Like most of the Great Plains, southwestern Oklahoma can be a windy place. And Lake Latonka this week is no exception. I took the kayak off the roof rack in hopes of slipping away for a short paddle here and a short paddle there. But the wind has thus far scuttled my plans. Wind, however, is an essential ingredient for windsurfing, something that our campground neighbor Kent is taking full advantage of. As someone who was an avid windsurfer in the 1990s before the sport met an untimely demise in the U.S., it's terrific to see someone out planing across the water. When we went full-time in the RV, though, it was finally time to divest myself of all my windsurfing gear that hadn't been used in years. So I'll just have to enjoy watching Kent scream across the lake. Kent now resides in the Dallas area, but grew up in Lawton and is thus an exceptional resource for local haunts. He's invited me to meet him for lunch in Mears, a tiny hamlet just northwest of our campsite in the foothills of the Wichita Mountains. Mears was founded in 1901 as a gold prospecting town, where it was named in honor of mine operator Andrew J. Mears from Cherokee County, Georgia. The original town's only remaining structure is the Mears Store and Restaurant, which Food Network named as the best hamburger joint in Oklahoma and one of the best in the United States, largely due to its signature Mears Burger. When Kent told me that their burgers were the size of dinner plates, I just assumed it was hyperbole. It wasn't. Lawton, Oklahoma is home to Fort Sill, which itself is now home to the United States Army Field Artillery School. In fact, the fort's artillery range occupies much of the land between our campground, the wildlife refuge, and the city of Lawton. The fort was first built during the late 1860s to control the Comanche, Cheyenne, Kiowa, and other Plains Indians during the Indian Wars. We're not military, so we first had to stop at the fort's visitor's welcome center for an electronic background check before receiving a visitor pass, which is then presented at the main gate for entry. I can't recall the last time I was on an active military base, and it's a unique experience for us to be able to wander around the base at will.
The fort's historical area comprises the Fort Sill National Historic Landmark. That includes the original quadrangle and parade grounds, as well as a small museum with a self-guided audio tour available from your phone. The fort is named for Brigadier General Joshua Sill, who was killed during the American Civil War. In the early 1930s, off-duty soldiers would sit across from the base hospital on this wall and catcall the nurses entering and leaving the hospital. In 1934, the new commander was shocked and appalled by this behavior and ordered the sergeant major to organize a work detail to gather all of the broken glass that they could find, lay down a layer of mortar atop the wall, and embed the broken glass so that no one would ever sit here and misbehave ever again. And no one has. Sherman House was built of native stone by 10th Cavalry troops in 1870-71. to 71. While visiting Fort Sill, General William Tecumseh Sherman narrowly escaped death at the hands of Kiowa warriors during a council held on the front porch here in 1871. Fort Sill Post Cemetery was established in 1869 and was southwestern Oklahoma's only cemetery until the 1880s. As a result, not only soldiers are buried here, but also Native Americans and civilians as well. 
It endures as a monumental landmark for the past, the present, and the future. The cemetery's chief's knoll contains the remains of numerous prominent Indian chiefs, many of whom were signers of the 1867 Medicine Lodge Treaty, including Kiowa leader Sitting Bear and Comanche leader Quanah Parker. However, perhaps the most notable Indian burial site at Fort Sill lies not in the Post Cemetery, but rather in the Apache Indian Cemetery established in 1894, a few miles to the northeast along Beef Creek. Famed Apache leader Geronimo died here at the Fort Sill Hospital as a prisoner of war in 1909. When we come back, following a quick ad break, we'll bring you along kayaking, hiking, and visiting the Museum of the Great Plains. So stay tuned. It's still breezy out on Lake Latanka, but with the wind subsiding a bit from its earlier brutal gusts, I'm going to take this opportunity to get the kayak out onto the water. Entering Schoolhouse Slough at the southeastern corner of Lake Latanka, I've come across an unexpected find. This marina is home to numerous boathouses, some in substantial disrepair, but all quite large and elaborate. Also worthy of a visit right in Lawton, 
The Museum of the Great Plains is dedicated to the collection, preservation, research, interpretation, and exhibition of items pertaining to the cultural and natural history of the Great Plains region of North America. The museum provides a deep look into the human history of the Great Plains. Extensive hands-on exhibits make this an exceptional museum to visit with children. The museum's major exhibits reveal the diverse cultures inhabiting the Great Plains region, beginning with the arrival of the Paleo-Indians known as the Clovis culture at approximately 11,500 BC. The museum is one of five partner museums in the Oklahoma Museum Network. Perhaps the most impressive exhibit is the museum's terrible Tuesday Tornado Theater. We won't give away the experience in this video, so as to not spoil it in advance of your visit. But you'll ride out one of the most historic tornado outbreaks in this region in a multi-sensory presentation inside a mock tornado shelter. It's exceptionally well done. You don't need to go into the wildlife refuge to see black-tailed prairie dogs. You'll find them right here in the museum's parking lot. When we come back, following another quick ad break to pay the bills, we'll bring you along on a hike to a magical spot within the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge. So stay tuned. We're embarking upon a short late afternoon hike to a geologically unique area of the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge known as the Narrows, and we're bringing you along. The unmarked trail begins at Boulder Cabin, built in 1912 of native stone as a traveler's shelter in the Wichita Mountains. This is a short hike, a little under three miles out and back, but some rock hopping and creek crossings add a bit to its difficulty, as does the fact that numerous herd paths branching off in various directions make navigation a bit challenging.
follow the right route, however, and you'll end up deep in this beautiful, narrow, water-filled canyon that's the antithesis of everything we believed Oklahoma to be. Continue up the canyon's opposite wall, and you're graced with a view into the canyon on three sides. So we truly hope that you've enjoyed visiting the Wichita Mountains and the surrounding area with us. If you like this episode, it is extremely important to us that you give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, that's where you'll find the comments section where we always love to hear from you after each grand adventure, which we premiere every Wednesday evening. Coming up next week, we're going to be making a huge jump, skipping all the way across the panhandle of Texas to southern New Mexico. So if you're not yet a grand adventurer yourself, now is the perfect time for you to go smash that little subscribe button right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and ring that notification bell to be sure that you never miss a grand adventure. We'd also be truly honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. So until next Wednesday from Southern New Mexico, please remember life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.